welcome once again to the uh, you know NPTEL model module on strategic trade and protectionism, uh, where we have already landed in uh, week number th uh, three, uh, about to complete week number three uh, with the last lecture of this, uh, which on which is on uh, extension to HO theory. So far, we discuss in detail about HO theory. Now, this particular lecture is on just completing HO theory with certain extension to it. Myself, Dr. Pratap Shimanti, uh, presently a faculty member in the Department of Humanity and Social Science, IIT Roorkee. So, in this uh, particular lecture, uh, we will certainly try to understand uh, the earlier uh, discussion on Hexerol model. Also, we will try to identify the problems with the Hexerol model and uh, uh, some some of the you know uh, and we'll discuss the previous issues as well. We'll also try to talk about what are the new additions to the HO model. Well, I think in the last four lecture in this week, we discussed uh, HO theory uh, by examples, by number of uh, you know uh, you know empirical evidences, also. We discussed, uh, you know, the criticism to HO theory with the help of uh, uh, many, uh, many, you know, many context. Like we discussed about uh, uh, Leontief paradox with the help of input-output model. Uh, we also discussed uh, FIR factor intensity reversal model, where we already identified the gaps in the HO model. So, hexer in model in an odd cell uh, suggests it's a new classical theory as we already pointed out uh, you know, in man, you know, many times in the last week, last to last week as well. So, this new classical th theory uh, which actually attaches many changes to the classical uh, model and uh, specifically HO theory uh, talked about specialization, but the specialization is incomplete and uh, there are possibility of mixed product in the basket of uh, commodities produced by a country. And uh, based on the relative advantage again, the country uh, could able to export or import. Now, <coughs> HO theory uh, is, is on, uh, the, uh, on the effect endowments. Uh, the endowments actually determine the uh, production function. And since it is exhibited with uh, you know increasing opportunity scale of production, uh, that lead to incomplete specialization. So, and the product we discussed largely uh, based on the product its, and its export to another country based on the resource availability. Now, question arises: uh, Though Hexer and Olin both discuss about um, specialization and import or export based on the resources, but in reality the countries which have higher resources on a particular product to be produced, but they are net importers rather than exporters identified by uh, input output model uh, in, 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 in you know um, Leontief analysis. Similarly, uh, we also talked about uh, factor uh, you know uh, 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 you know FIR factor intensity reversal model. So, now what are the other additions to Hexerolin theory so that we can end off uh, this particular lecture in this week, uh, purely specializing on Hexerolin related aspects. Now, to have you know, further uh, you know, clarification on the recent data, recent you know, evidences of Hexerolin model, I collected uh, many information from United Nations statistics. Uh, based on uh, you know based on the available to resources here what i found i observed that you know capital stock as part of endowment we discussed number of times so the capital stock uh, how it is determined uh, must be discussed uh, capital stock determined by uh, various uh, factor but here the extent of capital uh, stock is measured per worker in as per the latest available report uh, 2014 uh, in so basically in capital stock in 2014 in United States. Uh, I mean in dollar terms uh, especially in United States dollar term and also expressed with uh, per capita you know 
no uh, purchasing power parity PPP uh, terms, PPP with a figure of or, 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 or neutralized with 2011 you know, data. So, expressed in PPP of 2011 uh, data, which states that now the depth of the color, uh, the bluish color and its depth determines uh, determines the, the, the magnitude of capital stock per worker in the respective countries. Now, uh, on the dark blue uh, which is uh, here as greater than you know 2 lakhs, greater than 2 lakhs uh, capital stock, 2 lakhs US dollar capital stock is per worker. Now, these are expressed in PPE terms, so can be compared with other countries. So, these are not in purely in absolute numbers, so these are expressed in uh, purchasing parity numbers. So, therefore, these are comparable. So, what we find, uh, we observe here, the United States have huge capital stock, I mean this northern part uh, if you compare with uh, this extent even including India, China, these are relatively lesser uh, capital stock than that of uh, United States. Similarly, here another uh, country uh, even continent Australia uh, has also huge capital stock, so certain European countries also uh, ha you know have had higher capital stock as compared to other countries. So, that is the latest figure and accordingly we can project some forms of uh, export or, or, or import of the respective uh, resources. Now, if we express you know as we uh, have seen from the same report, uh, there are many data collected from um, 1994 to 2014. During this period, uh, then change has been observed, change of capital stock has been observed. Now, which country actually progress in terms of capital stock? Now, with a 200 plus percent and more, 200 percent and more rise in capital stock are, are, are experienced in this continent, India and China. So, similarly, some Southeast Asian countries as well. And, uh, and, and, and whereas, Russia even uh, you know those uh, developed country claim to be the developed countries and their change on capital stock or capital physical capital is, is very, very negligible over this period as presented by the UN statistics. Now, similarly, uh, we should also try to know some other figures which are quite interesting to note. Some other figures like uh, relative changes in physical capital stock uh, uh, 1988 to 2014. Uh, so, we try to compare here with all countries and emerging economies like India and China. Uh, so, um, uh, so, in this context physical capital is being compared. So, the physical capital uh, the change again it is relative changes uh, emphasized in the title. Uh, so, the title suggests they are the relative change are hovering around very, very less percentage except a bit of uh, Korea, Spain and Ireland. Switzerland and Algeria negatively you know uh, negative changes are noted, uh, but uh, largely those developed countries as we have presented during this period uh, have experienced you know the change near about you know minus 0 0.5 to 0.5 you know percentage which is it's very, very less. So, in the near terms those country who is claimed to be the capital you know intensive countries, I do not think you know they are going to progress or export capital intensive products uh, in the coming years. So, this is this is very, very clear and these changes are compared with a baseline of 1988 because changes are um, based on a, a base period 1928. In the previous figure also, so the baseline was mentioned change of physical stock from, from uh, here it is 1994, but now we are comparing with 18, 1988. Now, as, as against uh, you know the all countries and the emerging economies, now, especially in emerging economies, there is no negative change. Very clearly mentioned here, there is no negative change, no negative part. Uh, but China, look at China, though the percentage variation of uh, capital you know, change in those emerging countries are not too high, uh, it is again within the limit of 0.5, uh, 
but at least there is no negative term. In India, it is you know near about uh, half half of 0.5, so it is uh, still better than that of many other countries. Now, it's uh, you know it's not just uh, human capital, uh, not just physical capital which matters uh, for the country to export products or specialize in certain products. These red economies suggest that it is not the physical capital which actually determine the change. Rather, we now must think about human capital, which is composed of, uh, you know, majorly education segment. Even this human capital, uh, you know, discussions uh, are very much part of uh, the new classical growth theory model, like you know, uh, like in the endogenous growth model, it has been endogenized. Uh, so usually in solo model, solo you know growth model, we have we didn't see uh, the endogeneity of the human capital. But later on in the advanced growth model, these, these factors has been incorporated. Now, based on that many country uh, expect that human capital is really the determinant behind you know behind uh, the productivity growth or the intensity, intensity of production or intensive production. So, human capital index per person in 2014 as per the official figure, latest official figure we must try to understand that uh, there are variations. Now, human capital here in this figure is, is measured by a composite average of schooling years and return on education. So, these are the two direction by which the human capital has been measured. Now, based on this, uh, especially in 2014, uh, uh, the countries which are shaded with dark blue uh, having you know greater than 3.5 is the index number. Uh, so, majorly again the physical capital, the country is poised with high physical capital could able to spend hugely on human capital you know indices, therefore their return is also much better. So, second highest probably is with India, China and those emerging country economies. Uh, so, what we have observed that you know human capital really is one of the important uh, you know, factors behind, uh, behind change, change in uh, the change in the you know uh, export and import function. Now, look at uh, percentage change of human capital from 1994 to 2014, what is important here is, is, is the following. So, what, what we found, found percentage change you know just human capital is not enough, percentage is also change is also quite important. Uh, we, we have observed that in the in case of percentage change. Uh, India's position was uh, India and other emerging countries positions uh, were much better than 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 the, the developed countries. Uh, so uh, so what we expect from HO model not necessarily be followed if we import emphasize on change the relative changes the absolute changes in the absolute terms probably we have seen or uh, we have already seen uh, that uh, developed countries are better off. Whereas uh, the percentage change wise if you see it from again from 1994 to 2014, the change is uh, much better, better in India. Look at uh, the change is quite extra, I mean exceptionally better in India in some part of you know uh, other emerging countries like Brazil, even in some part of you know African continent as well. So, the human capital a rise is, 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 is exceptionally better for India. So, India has better future for uh, you know specializing in those products which can generate uh, you know good result in terms of exports. So, what we have largely understood so far based on the data is the following. We said that the country is poised with certain resources would necessarily export uh, those variety of product, but now in, 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 in reality the emerging countries have actually specialized in human capital and uh, they have grown their human capital segment and uh, those human capital has been incorporated in other model, other sector in physical, it is actually supporting physical capital largely. So, therefore, the developing countries uh, are, are now in a position to export other variety of products which requires human capital. Now, now, let us understand we have so far understood uh, hexagonal model uh, assumptions, criticisms or uh, you know even facts, figures 
so in previous lectures we did that. Now let us you know fill up the gap with uh, some extension of the HO model. Now there are uh, several alternative trade model models uh, which actually elaborate uh, you know, uh, again the theory of comparative advantage, but as an extension of HO because you know they largely emphasize the very assumption of uh, you know modern assumption of neoclassical theory. Uh, so one of the theories called product life cycle model uh, which focuses on technological change and uh, life history of many man manufacturer items through you know various forms of innovation, stabilization and standardization. Now this uh, theory uh, initially we said a country is going to specialize in some uh, some some you know uh, some uh, forms of uh, products but but no, and and keep on exporting but that will not continue for a long term we have also explained uh, it might continue for for you know, long term it might continue for uh, you know short term it may continue for you know medium term there are various models we have studied in the last lecture uh, last last lecture which talked about its implications now product cycle model which says that it, it gets it goes uh, by by certain cycle you know one one you know uh, manufacturer or the industry will grow its product but the product uh, will be actually imitated by other countries over the time so therefore the initial uh, impetus received in the form of uh, you know exports um, by the you know exporting country may not continue for a long run so therefore in the long run the possibility of uh, ex you know possibility of exporting this product uh, continually is I, I think you know not feasible or not possible because of various other factors. Similarly, we will discuss in detail in our next slide. Now what else is also important so far as extensions of this HO model is concerned? Intra firm trade model within the firm trade is possible. One sort of example uh, which we are going to ex, you know uh, take it forward in the next week is uh, it is actually based on economy of scale of production. Intra firm allows comparative advantage, but incorporates industrial organization. It also emphasizes organizations, strategies based on organizations and uh, strategies based on organizations and, and uh, group regime or, or co co Co, you know basically collating with uh, other strategies, other countries, other products, there are various possibilities. Another way of uh, you know understanding the model uh, basically based on technological differences. Initially we said it is based on uh, you know available to resources, therefore there are certain differences of technological uh, you know additions, uh, so therefore capital st stocks will add certain changes. Uh, so, one model specifically targeted for identifying the specialization is through technological gap. So, we, uh, it, 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 it was by Poshner in uh, 1961. The Poshner emphasized uh, the new product and the product process. So, new product and product process or later on uh, after Poshner uh, product cycle uh, theory uh, you know came to the limelight and which emphasize the innovator to uh, through the process to the adopters. And according to the advanced countries developed the new product and introduced the new product, uh, introduced the product with temporary monopoly power. This is what is very important. Temporary monopoly power as the sole exporter of the product. But later on, later on the technology uh, you know uh, producing, uh, I mean the country producing uh, you know uh, as the technology producing is the technology producing the product, technological advanced countries producing the product, technology uh, you know producing countries produce the uh, gets the product, gets the product become more widespread and production will spread to other nations. In short uh, this is uh, you know these are short sentences, so therefore uh, you read it between the lines uh, can able to understand uh, properly. So therefore, the product cycle model uh, moves international trade to a standard competitive advantage framework and it has a time component over the time how things gets revolved. 
So, in short the 1966 model of Vernon product cycle theory which is uh, which, which says that you know if as production becomes standardized the original producer of the product loses its technologically best best uh, competitive advantage in the production of product and becomes an importer of the product. So, so basically as I already said uh, over the time the, this uh, phenomena gets changed. Now, what is all about what are the arguments behind? So, basically there are you know cyclical changes on the process and uh, a Raymond Vernon had added that when a manufactured good is developed producers experiment it and seek consumers reaction after the production when the production leaves uh, the early stage the goods begins to be standardized uh, in terms of size maybe by manufacturing process by features by qualities. Now, finally, consumption of the good in a high country exceeds its production production moves where the labor costs are lower. I mean basically once it gets realized it, it, it gets its movement to other countries which does not have the endowment. So, that therefore, it is one of the extension to the model HO model. Now, again uh, we uh, here emphasize the, the production function to be you know based on the new classical framework and these are from different source. So, these are not developed by the author. Uh, so, it is from different books collected. So, therefore, we need to understand the concept based on different uh, different experts view. Now, what we have observed here now look at from this side innovating country and imitating country. Initially from starting with a time horizon and the quantity of product pr production uh, gets produced or produced in the stage 1. So, the country those are used to be the you know the, the, the advanced countries usually claimed as having you know huge number of patents. They in the initial stage they used to be exporter as well as importer. So, net balance of trade is 0 or there is no such surplus. But later on they started imitating in, in there is a stage they start imitating and I mean not start imitating they started you know innovating. So, they, they innovate in the second stage. So, therefore, their net addition to export is higher positive and they keep on adding you know optimize their the products till the time another country start I mean when the first country the innovating country exports the imitating country actually imports the extent of, these are the extent of import equated with the uh, exporting countries. Now, one it, it reaches at a maximum point uh, and there has been a, a, a you know depleting point from that point the in, in the imitating country or the importer started imitating and replace their uh, you know imports by exports. So, exports are dead in the stage number 4. So, in the latter part when the imitating country has been successful and replaced uh, many you know, exports could able to actually produce and then initially they uh, initially and now look at uh, their consumption function and production function. This line bold line is consumption function for the innovating country and this line is for production function for the that country and this is for the imitating country. Now, you can see the imitating country in the latter part of the periods are the net exporter whereas, the, uh, the innovating country are the net importers. So, therefore, product cycle model highlights the fact that the kind of regime some countries enjoys or some country poised with may not be continuing in the long run. Now, in short if you just put it like this in this figure. So, here early middle and late in the late. So, consumption increases. So, production receded. So, therefore, the, 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 expo the stories of, of net addition to export gets changed over time. Okay. So, product cycle theory accordingly developed and so uh, and in, in, in another case where uh, you know uh, so here we here we said consumption exceeds production in the next one we say production exceed in, in the imitating country the production exceeds consumption in the in, in after some period or in the long run or maybe in the mid, medium term to long run. So, they, they, they gets more value addition. So, they are uh, you know claiming to be the better ones. So, likewise, the emerging countries have actually magnificently changed their pattern. Uh, so, much of the international trade uh, in international uh, you know uh, discussion trade discussion 
we have observed that intrafirm trade is, is very important and we will also take, take it forward in detail that which means trade between the parent company in the home country and its affiliate in a foreign country attached with you know huge forms of intra firm which, which, which means firms take advantage of cross country differences in the price of inputs, quality of inputs and accordingly uh, they can minimize their cost. And uh, so, uh, to continue with the intra firm uh, discussion uh, in especially in the mid uh, 1990s, 95 onwards, two third of the US mercantile exports and two fifth of US mercantile imports carried out with, within firms. So, I mean you can imagine how much you know uh, of the products are actually carried out especially through in, you know intra firm channel. Now, Similarly, since interfirms are, are, are being discussed in the present day discussion of trade theories as an extension of HO, uh, HO theory, outsourcing has been observed as one of the most important channels because you know uh, to minimize the cost, uh, the countries uh, tap their resources from other countries. Now, if when they find that our labor cost is expensive here, they outsource their product to other countries which has you know cheaper labor cost and they outsource their product likewise we have huge BPO uh, sectors in India and we provide you know uh, uh, service oriented uh, you know uh, support to the topmost companies they outsource to minimize their cost. So, globalization actually has helped a lot to you know think of intra firm firm trade and then then so uh, the country uh, the HO theory is is, is uh, purely based on uh, domestic, uh, domestic, you know, domestic, uh, you know, endowments. But now, in in the present day discussion, this is no more domestic. Now we are actually, you know, exploring or tapping the benefits across the globe. So this is uh, very very important in the present day discussions. So outsourcing looks like technological change in the data because why technological change? Because the additions to the value. Uh, uh, or the knowledge addition is actually flowing and, and it is start from another uh, source. So, empirical results in stolper samuelson theorem may need to be rethought. Why may need uh, why to be you know, uh, uh, you know thought of again only because stolper samuelson theory which says that uh, you know income distribution, income distribution or redistribution of income uh, which was discussed and specifically to the uh, homogeneous sector, specific sector and the uh, uh, you know uh, mobile factor as discussed in stolper samuelson theory. Now, due to outsourcing uh, or technological change uh, through outsourcing uh, which has been in, in incorporated in the model of trade may lead to further redistribution of income. In addition also clean theoretical results in an environment with outsourcing are hard to come by dimensionality problems. There are various you know dimensional issues to be you know tech, uh, uh, to be discussed in the you know next week in detail where we will talk about uh, the you know outsourcing aspects with the help of intra industry model uh, carefully. It also says that you know outsourcing uh, in models with distortions may produce large welfare effects. Okay, uh, you, you you it may go for you know derived through I mean it may go for uni unions or through you know UL welfare state depending upon the extent of change, it might be also emphasized. Now, which you already discussed in uh, previous lectures, where we in uh, uh, talked about transportation cost, if you are in incorporated in the model, uh, our you know uh, specialization might vary. Uh, initially in all the models so far that they, uh, they emphasize you know transportation cost to be 0 to discuss trade. Now, we have already seen that if transportation cost is added still HO theory is not go, uh, going to be or is uh, go, not going to be invalidated. So, still HO theory stands and then and, and important. We have already discussed but still uh, transportation cost is one of the most important aspects of cost addition. Homogeneous goods will be trade will be in trade internationally only if the pre-trade price difference exceeds transport cost. Now, transportation cost uh, where non-traded goods and services like you know uh, or type of goods for which transportation cost exceed price difference across nations. 
So, uh, basically non traded goods and services are goods for which transportation cost exceeds price of basically you know uh, the products which are exported uh, or traded uh, it, it is quite sure that we you know the transportation cost is not exceeding if it is exceeding by uh, with the cost production cost then those products are not traded. Similar uh, I mean we have already cited these examples uh, I think uh, since we have already discussed uh, the fact that uh, we can identify the transportation cost in a partial equilibrium setup with demand and supply figure like this. Uh, so, <clears throat> there might be an equilibrium price whatever the uh, country one uh, exposed that will be tapped by uh, trapped in the form of imposed by another country. But if there will be transportation cost or just prices will be shifted, prices will be changed. So, uh, and accordingly uh, there will be new extent of production we have already discussed and but therefore, the HO theory is still valid, but this is simply an addition to the model. Now, in a nutshell, uh, we have discussed HO theory, its, it's, uh, its extension, its in you know, empirical evidences, its criticisms. Now, what is left then? Uh, HO theory another extension in the present time is through new trade theory. Uh, HO theory is also called classical theory, this is also called classical theory, but new trade theory where we will talk about the production function. So, our next class will guide you uh, very systematically on why we need for a new trade theory, because of the fact that HO theory did not consider production function to be you know. Uh, exhibiting with increasing returns to scale, production function were assumed to be constant return uh, following, following with constant return scale. So, this is what is so far uh, discussed, I think uh, next class will be very interesting if we discuss this in detail and some of the questions we will discuss in our separate uh, you know lecture uh, with this let me uh, stop here, we will carry forward, thank you.